But today what I want to do is not say why, what makes people go bad. I want to up the ante. I want to say what makes good people at time one. We all agree this is a good kid. This is a good, good person. So why do good people turn evil? And the reason we ask is not just out of scientific curiosity, but because psychologists are really optimistic. We believe if we know the means, if we know the processes, the mechanisms, we might be able to prevent it in the first place or certainly treat it or, or minimize it, diffuse it. <clears throat> I was also, in, in, I was also uh, influenced by Robert Louis Stevenson's wonderful novel, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The good Dr. Jekyll invents a chemical, which when he takes it, he is transformed from this good, nice, wonderful guy, a scientist, into the evil Mr. Hyde, killer rapist. And when the drug wears off, he, he goes back. He crosses the line from the line between good and evil, becomes the good Dr. Jekyll, good, good Dr. Jekyll again. But he can't resist trying it one more time. And when he does, he, again, he crosses from being good to bad. My friends all wanted to know what was in the juice because they, they wanted to try it. Uh, on the other hand, <clears throat> I wanted to know about the line. Because I had been taught that that line protects us. That is, we, the good people, are on this side, and the bad people are on that side. And that line is like a safety barrier, meaning we can't be seduced across it, and those bad people can't come over to our side. But the story forced me to entertain the possibility that the line is permeable, that people can cross back and, f back and forth, and therefore it's really important to understand what is the underlying process that makes a good person across that line? And so for the last 30, 40 years, that's what I've been working on, is trying to understand what are the psychological processes that can make a good person cross that line between good and evil. So I want to start with this wonderful illusion by the Dutch artist M.C. Escher. And I'd like you to look at it for a moment. It's better if you squint and focus on the white as the figure and the black as the background. So this is called a figure ground illusion in introductory psychology. And when you do, you see a world full of angels and tutus dancing around happily, okay? But now I want you to look more deeply and focus on the black as the figure and the white as the background. Now it's a world filled with demons. Here's the horns, here's the eyes, here's the wings and demons, demons everywhere. And so what Escher tells us is that the world is filled with angels and devils, goodness and badness, and was, is, and perhaps always will be, because the dark and, dark and light aspects of human nature are our basic yin and yang. That is, we all are born with the capacity, with this incredible brain, to be anything. Anything that is imaginable becomes possible. Anything that becomes possible can get transformed into action for better or for worse. So my sense is, you know, that old thing, are people born, born good, become corrupted by society, born bad? I think that's nonsense. We are all born with it's a tremendous capacity to be anything. And we get shaped by the family we happen to grow up in, which is an accident of birth, by the culture we happen to grow up in, by the time period we happen to grow up in. If we grow up in a, in a wartime, in a war zone versus peace, we grow up in poverty rather than prosperity. That's the, thing, that's the push from society uh, and nature. There's a great cartoon which summarizes my talk. I'm neither a good cop nor a bad cop, Jerome. Like yourself, I'm a complex amalgam of positive and negative personality traits that emerge or not depending on the circumstances. <laughs> and long before this New Yorker cartoonist uh, said this, uh, George Bernard Shaw and Major Barber says, every reasonable man and woman is a potential scoundrel and a potential good citizen. What a man is depends upon his character, what's inside. What he does and what we think of what he does depends upon his circumstances. So for me, that's very profound.